What up guys, Alex here, and in today's video we'll be recreating the color grading looks from the film's Bad Symmetry and the Ring in After Effects. Before we jump in, I would just like to clarify that I am not a professional colorist and I do not even consider myself to be very good at it, but I'm getting a lot of questions all the time about how I do all these color grading looks for my films, which I guess means that people like my work. So if you like what you saw in the preview and you want to find out how to achieve a similar look for your projects, then make sure to watch until the end because I will be covering these step by step. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, give this video a like, and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future uploads. We will start with the Pet Cemetery look, and by the way, the shot that you see on the screen right now is actually from a Pet Cemetery inspired film that I did. I'll have the link to it in the description. I will also include the download link to this shot and the reference images in the description so that you can practice with my footage and follow along with the tutorial if you want to. First thing I will do is I will import a reference image into the composition to obviously use it as a reference, lol. Then I will click on this little lock icon and select the layer with the reference image and pre compose it alone. Double click to go into the new composition we have created and click on the lock icon again. Now I will just take this composition box and drag it to the left side of the screen or right, whatever is more comfortable for you. And if we go back to our original composition, you will see that we now have both our reference image and the clip on the screen. I didn't know that this method existed until recently and it really changed a lot of things for me when it comes to VFX as well. So. Well, now you guys know it too. And just a quick disclaimer, I will be using some Red Giant coloring plugins in this tutorial. However, if you don't own their products, you can use uh, effects such as Lumetri Color, Curves, Levels, and stuff. They have all these color wheels as well, so you can just take a look at what I'm doing and achieve the same results using the other effects if you need to. Let's apply the Colorista plugin, and for the highlights, I will go almost all the way down for the blue. You can also control the amount of color and the brightness with these, I don't know, controllers on the side. I will darken the highlights a lot and keep adjusting the color until it looks good. Now I will push the midtones to the blues again, but not as much as we did for the highlights, and I will also brighten them up. Same thing for the shadows, but even less. I will also push the temperature to the warmer side a little bit and slightly darken the exposure. Let's add just a little bit of saturation and make some minor adjustments in the structure and lighting panel. For the vignette, I will go a little bit higher though because it's pretty strong in the reference image. As you can see, the skin color is looking super blue right now, so let's go ahead and work on that. Duplicate the layer, remove the colorista adjustment, hide the original layer, and search for a luma key effect. Change it to key out brighter and move the threshold up until you get something like this. Now let's search for a linear color key effect and what we want to do here is sample the color from a dark spot in your shot. I will then switch it to using hue and keep adjusting these parameters until we get rid of the background as much as possible but keep the skin. As you can see we have lost a lot of detail in the eyes because they are darker so let's duplicate this layer, remove all the effects and create a very simple mask around the eyes. Open up the mask settings and activate the watch icon next to the mask path. Going back and forth, make sure that the mask sticks to the area you applied it to. I only had to create a few keyframes, so it's super simple and takes less than a minute. Cool, let's select these two layers and pre-compose them, and we can turn the original clip back on. Now because we only need the skin here, using the pen tool we will want to create a mask around the face. It doesn't have to be precise because we'll feather it out later anyways. And just like we did with the eyes, animate the mask path. Do the same thing with the hand. And 
And once you're done with that, you can open up the mask properties and feather both masks out to blend them into the shot. Click on the original layer and using Ctrl plus C, copy the colorista effect and using Ctrl plus V, paste it onto the skin layer. Here we can decrease the strength of the effect to around 50%. This will just help the colors to blend in better. And now that we have our base, we can go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and apply a mojo effect from Red Giant. I will change it to video and zero to be able to start from scratch. Here you just want to play around with the settings until you get something that you like. I'm just making minor adjustments to the color, adding contrast and stuff like that. We can already see that it helps to blend the colors even more. Search for a curves effect and here I will just brighten the highlights up a little, raise the shadows and bring the midtones down. After that you can switch from RGB to red, green or blue colors and affect those colors individually. Next, apply selective color and we have the exact same idea here, just play around with the adjustments until it looks right. I'm only going to be working with cyans, I really don't know how to pronounce this, um, blues, neutral and black colors. I'm just gonna apply another curves effect, bring the highlights down and bring up the shadows a lot more this time. Then I will do some very small adjustments with the red, green and blue colors. And because the effect might be just a little strong this time, I will go to my adjustment layer, open it up, click on the effects, curves to and compositing options. And here you can control the opacity of the effect. And if you didn't know about this, then congrats, you have learned about another cool method today. We only have a few more effects left, so it's not gonna be long now. Let's search for a color balance effect and click on the preserve luminosity box. This is one of my absolute favorite effects when it comes to coloring because when I'm working with it, I can really see where I went wrong and what I need to fix and it can sometimes really help help you to balance the colors out. Let's apply a photo filter effect and change it to this weird color that I can't pronounce again, but I think it's Cyan's. I will leave the preserve luminosity box on. Bring it up all the way to 100 and go to the layer effects, uh, compositing options and change the opacity of the effect to around 50%. Let's add a second photo filter and this time change the color to green. I will bring it down to around 7%. Now I will apply Red Giant's Magic Bullet looks and select the Beverly preset. I will get rid of the Cosmo and S-Curve effects. I will leave the Colorista but bring it down to around 70%. Now I will select a Lens Vignette effect from the Tools menu and adjust it a little bit. And finally, the diffusion effect. I really like it because it can really help to finalize the look if that makes sense. Great, we're done with the look now and I will just create a few things before exporting the result. First, I will select the skin layer and bring the opacity down a little bit to around 80%.
Then I will create a new adjustment layer and apply the Bezier Warp effect. You don't need to do this, but I just like to distort the image a little bit when adding the aspect ratio bars. I'll change the left top vertex and right top vertex to 50 and left bottom vertex and right, top, right bottom vertex to 1030. I will also add some grain and aspect ratio bars. And there you go, the first look is all complete. Moving on to our second look, inspired by one of my favorite horror movies, The Ring. Here we will do everything pretty much the same way, I mean using all the same effects and techniques, but obviously we will be working with different colors. So first I will import the reference image, lock the composition, pre-compose the reference image, go into the new composition and lock it as well, then move it to the side. I will start applying the colorista effect for the highlights. I will actually go for this orange kind of color and I will also darken the highlights. For the midtones, I will go for this bluish kind of color. It's like a mix between blue and green and I will bring the midtones up a little bit. And finally, I want some green color in the shadows and I will also make them a little bit darker. Let's add some minor temperature tint and exposure adjustments. And next we will do something that we didn't do for the previous look and we will use the second wheel window. This is for the hue and saturation of the colors. As you can see, we have too much greens in our shot right now, so we will just change it a little bit to the more bluish color and saturate it a little bit more. The second wheel is basically for the brightness of the color, so I won't be doing too much here. And I'll just add some detail to the shadow in the lighting and structure menu. Now just like we did with the previous look, we will need to bring some skin colors back, so let's duplicate the layer, remove the colorista effect, add luma key and linear color key effects to get rid of the background and keep only the skin colors. The settings will be exactly the same as last time by the way. Then I will duplicate this layer again, get rid of all the effects, create a simple mask around the eyes and animate the mask path. After that, pre-compose these two layers and start creating mask around the face, hand and also this time we'll create a rough mask around the stick because it has a little bit of fake blood on it and I want to keep the reds a little bit in the shot. Again, the mask can be super simple because we have our background masked out and we will also feather the masks out so it will blend in very nicely in the end. Now I will add a selective color effect to the skin layer because if you look at the reference image, the reds are looking a bit more purple, so this is what we're gonna do now. Now I'll also bring some yellows back so that the skin doesn't look purple. I will also reduce the opacity of this effect by selecting the layer, clicking effect, selective color and compositing options. Just like we did previously, copy and paste the colorista effect onto the skin layer and reduce the strength to 50%. And lastly, I will add a curves effect to this layer and work with the reds. Here I just want to make the highlights more red and add some greens into the midtones. By the way, I went a little bit overboard with this effect and went back to change it later in the video, so this is a clip of me adjusting it later. Don't pay attention if the colors look a little bit different. Next, we can go ahead and create a new adjustment layer and search for a mojo effect. I'm switching it to video and zero and then you can just play around with it until the colors look good. So 
Search for a selective color effect and again just play around with it. I'm only working with cyans, greens, neutrals and blacks. And what I'm trying to do is bring just a little bit of that green color back. Next step would be the curves effect. I will bring the highlights down, bring up the shadows and then individually work with reds, greens and blues. I also want to add a little bit of saturation, which we can do with the vibrance effect. I will leave it at around 20. Now apply the color balance effect and just balance out the colors a little bit. Then add a photo filter, change it to underwater, turn off the preserve luminosity box and reduce the opacity of the effect to around 40% in the layer settings. Add another photo filter and change it to cyan. I will leave the preserve luminosity box on this time and reduce the density to around 13%. Now we will use another new effect that wasn't in the first part of the tutorial. We will apply a tritone effect and here we can sample the highlights, midtones and shadows from the actual reference image. It helps to blend the colors a little bit more but make sure to change the blend with the original setting to around 85% because we need this adjustment to be very minimal. I've also noticed that the footage looks a little too dark right now, so I will add a second curves layer, raise the highlights and bring the shadows down a little. I will also reduce the opacity of the effect to 80% so that it's not that strong. Time for the magic bullet looks. I will use the Beverly preset again and only leave Colorista, which I will reduce to 50% and Diffusion. And from the tools menu, I will also choose a lens vignette effect. Everything is pretty much the same as last time. Play around with the settings until you are satisfied with the result. And that is our second look all complete. Just like last time, I will add a busier warp effect, film grain and aspect ratio bars. Alright guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and if it was helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, give this video a like and turn on the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I upload another cool tutorial. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!